Hello and welcome to Games Radar Plus's video review of Batman Arkham Knight. I'm Features Editor Dave Horton. I'm joined today by Sam Roberts, Editor of PC Gamer, because Sam has reviewed the game for us. Hello. Um, right, first things first, Sam. Um, the game, even for an, Ar for an Arkham game, looks ridiculous, uh, from what I've seen of it, visually at least. I mean, just the rain on the cloak seems almost worth the price of admission. Yeah. yeah. Um, does the overall game feel like a real next-gen scale-up? Yeah, I think so. Like uh, just the the quality of the environment in terms of like lighting, smoke, uh, detail. They talk about how they build these handcrafted environments at Rocksteady, and you really kind of feel that this time around. Mm. I think that in terms of detail, it really feels like the, the new standard for open world games. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, and scale really helps as well. Like it feels like three Arkham cities bolted together. Wow. Um, so driving around it is, is just a really fun thing to do in and of itself. It's a it's a beautiful city, and like no matter what kind of level you're on, it's got a lot of kind of a sense of verticality. Yeah, uh, it's it, it looks phenomenal, and it's uh, great fun to just be in that environment. Yeah, because I mean, I think the the mantra with Arkham Arkham City at least was always kind of maybe not the biggest but definitely the most detailed. Yeah. Does it really feel like they've actually managed to scale that up this time around? To... Yeah, completely. Like um, each of the three islands feels like its own thing. Like there's right. one that's almost like um, Dubai, a lot of glossy oh, wow. buildings, but it's being built on top of like the old city. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. So you've got skyscrapers there, and then you've got another region that's uh, that includes like Chinatown and uh, yeah, kind of like more basic residential district. And then there's another island that has Wayne Tower on it, for example. And it's uh, yeah, it, it's there's a really kind of good sense of variety there. Excellent. So uh, in terms of the escalation, obviously one of the main thing, new things we've seen is this concept of dual play, which is sort of like a fake co-op with you have various with the members of the Bat family helping you out at various times. Yeah. Um, how does that? feel how does that exactly feed into the feel of the overall game i mean does it dilute the sense of being batman at all um it's actually one of my favorite things about the game but it's it's really only momentary in the grand right. scale of the grand scheme of things like uh there's uh, once there's the longer sequence involves robin um and you kind of going through this these hallways taking out enemies together and it feels great there's um a sequence before uh, one of the fights where you and Robin team up where mm. the two of them just sort of like kick down a door at the same time hearing some enemies on the other side yeah. and then just go in and like kick the crap out of them Pretty. and and that is such an amazing kind of like fist punching moment yeah it's like it, yeah it's it's really kind of brings it a nice energy and there's some bits with Nightwing and Catwoman as well that involve that and I, I think it feels really good it's a really nice natural extension to the free flow combat as it is now yeah and I suppose kind of like sort of narratively it works quite nicely the, the, the bat, we've seen the Bat family before but they've always sort of felt a bit sort of theoretical and kind of cameo base before. Yeah. Is there a real sense of them all kind of it becoming a unit now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. They're, they're, Robin's quite heavily integrated into the main story, and yeah. Nightwing is basically attached to the Penguin side quest. Right. Um, so, but still feels like he's part of that universe in a way that they weren't before. They felt like DLC characters before, it's yeah. true. But yeah, this time around, yeah, they feel like part of a wider universe. Oh, great. Um, as for that story, though, um, interesting point to note is that this is the first uh, Rocksteady Arkham game not written by Paul Dini. Uh, obviously, Batman comics right and responsible for a lot of the animated series. Yeah, uh, is that a problem at all? Um, as I understand it, Paul Dini was only like ever kind of like uh, one part of the storytelling oh, right. unit at Rocksteady. Like I think he he had a role in the overall narrative, but mm. they've always had their own narrative designers right. there. Um, I don't know if uh, him not working on it has affected it at all, but the story certainly feels more uneven to me than right. it did in Arkham City. Uh, the structure of it is really kind of odd, and mm. uh, the Arkham Knight I don't think is a particularly compelling villain. And I'm not that impressed by their, inter their their the new depiction of the Scarecrow either. I don't find him particularly compelling or scary mm. as a villain. Right, because it sounds a bit of a shame, because obviously given there were a hell of a lot of plot threads set up in Arkham City, especially towards the end. Yeah. I mean, does it act as a satisfactory conclusion to that stuff? Yes. Right. Uh, and not all of that stuff is paid off in the main story either. Some of it is, uh, is side quest based. A lot of the things left over from Arkham uh, mm. City were, I think. Right. Yeah, but um, but yeah, it, I, I certainly think that it, it brings uh, brings the story round. I just don't think it's that well told, right. generally speaking. Okay, one I say last point, but probably major point we need to cover is the goddamn Batmobile. Mm -hmm. Right, we know that's a thing. We know there's going to be racing and driving and race puzzles and tank combat. Yeah. Um, how the hell does that fit into the current Batman situation? Well, I, I think the two pillars of Batman as they are now are the free flow combat and the predator stuff, which yeah. they've they've mastered and they're both at their best in this game, better right. than they've ever been, I think. Um, but the the Batmobile functions really well as a mode of transport, just mm. driving around that city and blowing through like stone pillars and causing damage yeah. and chasing people. That's all very fun. 
but when you get into the actual combat, I think it's a it's a major misfire. Um, right. They've they've bring, they've brought in all these automated tank sections where mm. you're strafing in the Batmobile and shooting vehicles, and it it's a fine diversion at first, but then it it, it never really develops. And there's an absolute ton of it in the main story, oh and it's very frustrating. And even worse, there's these tank stealth sections. What? Those are two words that should never go together. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to like hide behind buildings and then sneak up behind a tank to take mm. it out. And they are absolute. They are horrendous. And it's a real surprise to me that like they built these amazing combat systems, but then in this, they've it really just doesn't stand up in the oh. same way and it's it's the it's the major thing holding the game back from greatness i think right so how much of it is there cuz i know you mentioned it in terms of the two other pillars is it big enough to be like a third pillar of the game yeah it oh. almost feels like there's as much of it as there is uh, hand to hand combat in the oh main dear. story but the good thing is that once you we finish the main story and you're mopping up the side quests you can just uh, you don't have to do it um, right. And so you don't have to think about it again. So I played 10 hours of side quests after me finishing the main story and I haven't done one of those sequences again. I have the option to, but I really don't want to. <laughs> that sounds like a good fix, yeah. kind of. Um, okay, so one final point, possibly the most important one. What's the final score? Four out of five. Excellent. Okay, um, if you want more detail on the game, which obviously I'm sure you do, then the uh, full written version of Sam's Review is on Games Radar right now. Um, in the meantime, for all other Arkham related stuff you might possibly want to know, uh, keep it on Games Radar and uh, we'll see you soon. That was a pretty sweet video, right? If you want to see more, go to Games Radar's YouTube page over here. Or if you want to read, maybe up your game a little bit, go to GamesRadar.com.